Hi, this is an introductory video on how to build a simple bot, NodeBot. So today what we're going to do is uh, pull apart the kit that you would get on a NodeBots day or as a NodeBots kit and put it together so we can show you how to do that without having to read a really long boring instruction manual. So the kits vary a little bit from version to version but generally speaking this is what's available inside it so you've got a bunch of chassis pieces so you've got some wheels you've got a bumper bar that you can kind of mount things to at the end you've got the main body piece here with a whole bunch of holes in here to be able to attach things to uh, as well as the mounting points for the uh, for the bumper bar uh, you've got a breadboard you've got a battery pack uh, that just takes standard double a batteries uh, we have some servos here as well uh, and these are continuous rotation servos so that you can use these to drive your wheels. Uh, with each servo, <coughs> you also get a pack of uh, servo horns here. Uh, so I've already pulled this apart, but uh, basically what you're after is the one of the screws in here to be able to mount your servo horn onto your servo, uh, as well as probably this guy, this uh, nice big long bar horn that you can attach to the server. And we'll, we'll show you how to put that together in a minute. Uh, as well as that, we've got some wire to attach our wheels onto our servos. We've got a 3D printed skid and a bolt to hold that. So this can uh, be used to help balance your robot. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of jumper wires. So these are a male to male jumper wires. So they have uh, prongs on either end so that you can use these to attach uh, components to your breadboard. Uh, we've got a breadboard that you can use to kind of plug things into. We've got some additional jumper wires and these are very specific ones. So these are uh, female on one end and male on the other, uh, as you can see here. So uh, these, these are used for the uh, ultrasonic sensor. Um, you've got an Arduino and this is an Arduino Nano, which is quite a small Arduino, uh, which plugs in via a uh, mini USB port and you'll have some kind of USB cable that you can use to attach uh, the Arduino to your computer. You don't need much in the way of tools to put one of these uh, together. Uh, you will need a screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, ideally with not too big an end on it so that you can use it for uh, all sorts of different comp components. Uh, and a pair of wire cutters or side cutters um, but nothing in here is particularly tough, so you could just use a pair, standard pair of scissors to make this work as well. So, they're all the pieces, they're the tools that we need to, to make this work, so let's get building. So, the first thing we're going to do is attach our wheels. Now these take a little bit of time to do, so what you're going to want is one of your wheels, one of your servo horns, and a little bit of this beading wire. So, rather than have to kind of worry about attaching things with uh, screws and kind of having to kind of be very particular about lining things up. What we do with this kit is that we actually just lash the, uh, the wheel onto the servo horn. So what you're after is probably about 20 centimeters or so of the beading wire. Uh, and there should be plenty in there for the four lots that you need. There's, there's normally about a couple of meters in here. So we're just gonna take off about 20 centimeters or so, and we'll just fold that over. So we've got two halves like this. And what we're gonna do is just take our wheel here, we line up the center hole of our servo horn with the center hole of our wheel. And all we're gonna do is just put the wire through the holes and it's pretty much just like sewing on a button and because of the size of this and the kind of way that we lash this on you'll actually find that this is a really secure way of holding this on so we get that in pull it down nice and tight and then we just hold it like that and then what we're going to do is get one side of our wire and put it through the hole on the other side and then just keep holding that nice and tightly and just do the same thing, just round and round and round. So notice I'm just doing this with one piece of wire at the moment, uh, with one side of the wire. So I'll get one side finished before 
I start on the other one. So I'm just going to keep on going around and around. You can see that I'm just holding the servo horn in place and just pulling the wire reasonably tightly. It doesn't need to be kind of, you know, insanely tight. It's just enough to really sort of hold it in position. So I just keep going around and around and around with this um, until I've probably got a couple of centimeters, maybe, you know, three to four centimeters, just over an inch uh, that's left. So. You can see there I've gone around about three or four times and I've got a reasonable amount there, sort of, you know, you can see from here, it's it's a bit bit over kind of one joint of my finger, so just a little bit over an inch. So once I've got that, I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And so again, just round and round to lash this guy on. Now what you'll notice is as you're doing this, the first side of this will feel a bit unstable. It will kind of um, move around a lot. So really what you're trying to do is just just keep the servo horn in place as best as you're able to uh, as you do this. Um, not least because the servo horn as you can see here it actually tapers towards the end. So if you keep pushing this in it will kind of hold it at the widest part uh, between the two holes <clears throat> without too much trouble whatsoever. So we'll just keep going round and round on here while we do this and then now I've got this one finished um, we can pull both pieces together so what we end up with is something that look like, looks like this we've got our servo we kind of make sure that we've got it lined up nice and center with the hole in the middle of the wheel and then we've got this nice really well bound um, servo horn onto our wheel uh, just round and round like a button and then all we're going to do is take these and then just start twisting them now we don't need to go too hard you don't need to use pliers or anything like that you're pretty much just twisting it and what will happen is the twist will pull together the wires and tighten everything up so as long as you've kept this relatively tight as you've kind of been going along then this should work quite well so you can see here I'm just twisting this um, to get rid of most of the excess here and that's what I get left with so you can see I've got this nice twist it's nice and um, pretty firm you can see I'm kind of moving that around and it's um, holding in position quite well even though there's only really one side bound up yet and then all I'm going to do is take my side cutters or my uh, scissors and I'm just going to nip the end off of that so they get a nice clean joint <coughs> and then just fold that flat. So don't need to do anything kind of more spectacular to it than that. This will pretty much hold without any trouble whatsoever. So I'll just do the same thing again. So grab my piece of wire. Which is nicely tangled. Um, about 20 centimeters, 20 to 30 centimeters of it. And we'll quickly do the other side. So again, I'll just make sure my hole is nicely lined up and then I'm going to feed each side of the beading wire through. So I've got it nice and linked together like that. Hold it in place, take one side of my wire and then quickly just start wrapping this around. Um, so <clears throat> you would do this to the other other one as well. This is probably the most complex piece of the whole the whole uh, build, and uh, you know don't be afraid to unravel it if if you find that before you get to the kind of twisting point that it feels a bit loose, then just just pull the wire off and go again. It, uh, you can use this wire. It's actually designed for jewelry, so it's pretty strong and it will will hold. Uh, quite a lot of tension, but uh, so if you if you do feel like the the servo horn is feeling a bit loose, then just unravel it and go again. So <clears throat> as you can see, once you've done this a few dozen times, like I have, you can get pretty quick at it to to produce these sorts of things. So just take your time, round and round. Um, you notice that I'm pulling the wire as I kind of put it through and that's because it is quite stiff so when you uh, 
when you pull it through, it will have a tendency to kink a little bit. So again, I just get my two ends, start twisting them up, and I'm using the twist to kind of drive down into this at the same time, so it's kind of pulling up any of the slack that's left behind. And as you can see, I've got my nice tight uh, servo horn on there, get the end off, lay it flat, and they're nice and out of the way now. And that's, that's pretty much what we want to do. So I'll do the other one quickly now, and then we'll come back to this in a second. Okay, so as you can see, we've done both uh, servo horns now. So you can see that uh, everything's kind of lashed on nice and tightly. It's, uh, it doesn't really want to move very much, which is, which is really good. I've aligned the holes on both the horn and the, uh, the other side of the wheel and we've now got two of them produced. So now we've got our two wheels for our little simple node bot. So the next thing we're going to do is attach these onto our servos. So these are pretty straightforward to put together. Uh, all we do is we take our uh, servo here, line up the hole with the uh, servo horn. Now these do have, you won't be able to see this on the video very well, but once you get your servos in your hand, you'll see that they're, they're actually kind of got very, very small little, uh, almost like a gear-like shape to the outside of it. Um, so that helps hold the two things together. So you will, don't force it if it doesn't feel like it's gonna go because uh, you don't wanna damage these little edges on here. So um, just jiggle this around up until the point where it sort of snaps on and then you'll just notice that it will just kind of pop in just like that. Um, so we can tell that our wheel is put on quite nicely um, if we can just gently turn the servo just using the wheel. And you can see that this is really just, um, because of the rotation, it's, it's really holding on quite well. So like I said before, you don't need to have this too tight, but tight enough to hold it in place. So the next thing we're gonna do is just take uh, our screw, drop that in through the hole there, and this is just to really secure it in place. So all we're gonna do is just uh, screw that in <coughs> and get that guy in there. Again, don't over tighten this. Um, you know, it, it's only there to just kind of stop it from popping off that way more than anything else. So we'll do that with the other one. So we just pop this on like that. Uh, again, just give it a gentle turn to make sure that we're turning okay. Grab our other screw here. Drop that guy on there. And away we go. And there's our two wheels done. So now we're pretty much ready to start attaching all of these components onto our main sort of body. Now, <clears throat> when you build one of these things, it's, you can pretty much attach these things wherever you want. So the way that SimpleBot was designed was everything should be attached really with cable ties or uh, you know uh, things like that. So what these grids along the side here are for are pretty much the width of a cable tie. So you can put these wheels wherever you, wherever you fancy. Now, what the way that we're going to build this today is pretty much uh, the sort of reference design, I guess. And it's designed so that most of the weight is situated over a particular point. Um, and so what you'll find is that as, because these things are so light, if you start putting all of the heavy components all over different places, the, the bot becomes very unstable. So what we want to do is get our wheels and whatnot all the way up to kind of the edge here with the bumper. Um, this is pretty much a front wheel drive robot, so it's kind of pulling itself along, uh, but you'll see that as it starts to kind of come together. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach our battery pack. So we want our battery pack here in the middle. Now we wanna be able to get into the batteries to be able to put them in and out. So whilst we're building this, we'll leave the batteries out. Um, so as you can see, we've got an open side or two open sides and we've got this flat side here as well. So what we'll do is we'll just line that up with this kind of end hole here. And all we're going to do is grab a couple of these cable ties. Now, these are quite long ones, but you might find that you've got fairly short 
cable ties in your kit. So what we'll do is we're, we're actually going to use two cable ties to hold this together. So the first one is going to come out from the bottom. We'll bring it across and over the top of the, the battery pack like that. And it doesn't need to be too tight at this point in time. Um, get rid of our wires out to one side so that we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> and what you'll find is that unless you've got a super long cable tie, this won't actually fit the, uh, the battery pack itself will be too, uh, too big. So all we're going to do is take a second cable tie, attach it on the end here like this, and we're going to use this to kind of extend the cable tie, but this also gives us two points that we can kind of pull down on, which is, which is really handy. It helps keep the, uh, the battery in place really readily. So you can see here I've kind of cinched it all the way up to the board itself, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and just pop this in. sometimes so there we go so pop this in. now we can actually tighten this on both sides so we can really get a nice secure um, position on this battery so we don't want the batteries falling out and kind of um, you know, or the battery pack wandering around too much, not least because this is the heaviest part of the robot. So we want that nice and secure, nice and central along our kind of center line. And then also we want it kind of positioned more or less over the axis of the, the wheels so that it will balance nice and strongly like that. So we've got our battery on there. We'll, not, we'll nip all these kind of cable tie-ins off in a minute. So the next thing we're going to do is put our servos on here. So you'll notice that with the servo, that in terms of the line of the servo, the, the, the kind of motor component is actually located to one end. Now, I tend to kind of push this as far back as I possibly can. Again, it's partly to kind of try and get this alignment across the, uh, the weight of the battery with the, the axis of where the wheels will be. So again, we're gonna use cable ties to hold this in place. So we just, uh, line our servo up, <clears throat> uh, pop our cable tie down like this, and cinch this up. Just like that. And we'll continue to do that. So unfortunately the camera battery just died so I've had to take a pause but we'll continue on from here. So as you can see I've uh, pulled the cable tie in here and I'm just going to get that nice and tight uh, again. Uh, as you can see just cinching that kind of nice and uh, sweetly there. Now we've actually designed this so that you can apply two of these to each servo just to really kind of keep them in place without them spinning around. So this is just to kind of allow for the uh, servers to just hold their shape a little bit, just stay in that kind of forward driving position. Otherwise you'll find that your, your simple lot will start going in circles as it gets a bit lopsided. So again, we're just kind of popping that on there and you can see it just sits nicely underneath the uh, attachment points here and we can kind of uh, get that second one in for stability. And you can see now it doesn't really want to move too much. So we'll do the same thing to the other side now. So again, we're just going to line up our uh, motor point so that it's uh, at pretty much the bumper end here. And we'll just get a couple of cable ties. go. Um, as you go along you'll find that the, uh, the number of cable ties just sticking out from the bottom will eventually become annoying so that's the point we'll kind of chop them all off uh, but you know, feel free to do that whenever you, whenever you want to. Uh, so we've got that one on there as well <clears throat> and we'll add our last one here.
So you can see that really this whole system was designed to kind of be very, very straightforward. It's all cable tie driven. It's really uh, a basic robot to be able to get you up and going and playing around with this sort of stuff rather than having to worry about fine tune mechanics. So there we go. So now what we've got is our two servos attached onto here. We've got uh, our wheels located as close to the end as we can. We've got our nice uh, <coughs> battery pack sitting here in the middle. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just quickly take the opportunity to lop all of these off uh, just so that they don't drive me too mad. So we'll just take them off, chuck them off to one side. Um, just look to make sure that you've got them nice and tight without going too silly. And we go from there. So that's more or less the hard part out of the way. And that's not going to get in the way of driving. So the next thing we're going to do is attach our uh, breadboard and our Arduino and all of that sort of stuff, which we'll do in a second. Okay, so now we've got all the hard part out of the way, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our skid. So this is for balance. So as you can see, it's sitting, um, most of the weight's over here, but it's sitting, uh, so it's still dragging the back of the simple bot around. So all we want to do is take our 3D printed skid, light it up with one of these holes. There's, there's a bunch of uh, sort of round holes that exist around the place and you can pretty much, I go for the center one sort of towards the back here. Uh, so all we're going to do is take our bolt, uh, place it through the hole here and screw it in just like we would do ordinarily any old bolt. So you might find, particularly with your uh, 3D printed skid, that because the skid itself doesn't have any thread printed inside it, it might take a little bit of work just to uh, get it get it all going in. You might hear a few little cracks and pops. Um, you know, don't don't force it too hard. Just go easy. But that, that is to be expected to hear little kind of cracks and pops. You might hear one here actually, or maybe not. Um, so once we've got that on, you can see we've got our skid here. Uh, it's attached through with our bolt. Now, when I set this down, it sits much flatter. You can see that it's sort of um, not touching so much on the ground and that will help with friction as we, uh, as we drive the simple bot around. So we've got that in place now. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is take our breadboard here and I'm just gonna line that up in the center again so that we have this nice center uh, piece of access. Um, if you're using a full-sized Arduino, it's gonna line up with some of these holes. So you probably wanna pop that off to uh, one side so that you've got enough place for a full-sized Arduino to kind of sit in here. Um, but it doesn't really matter exactly where you put this so long as you're kind of happy with it and it's sort of central. So again, we're just gonna use a cable tie. So we'll pop this up through, through here, pop it down, and then zip tie that together. Uh, and you'll notice, when I show you this in a sec, um, there's actually a channel in the center of the breadboard. So what we're gonna do is just line the cable tie up so it sits across that channel and that will still allow us to pop bits and pieces onto the breadboard without any trouble whatsoever. So you can see now we've got our nice breadboard, we've got our wheels, we've got our um, battery and all that sort of stuff. So let's just take this off. And there we go. So next up, we'll take our Arduino and all we're going to do is just lightly press this in. So what I tend to do is I try and get the Arduino pins so that I've got my USB connector here and I want this towards the back of the robot so the cable can uh, follow along behind it. So all I do is I get my sort of most rear pin, this one here, uh, lined up with the the last hole on the breadboard and that gives me a couple of spares to have up here which you'll see why I want that in a second. So we just press this in nice and gently now. It doesn't need to go in all the way. Uh, the springs in the breadboard will hold it in place quite happily. Um, when you go to pull these out, try and pull them out from the side this way 
rather than that way because what you'll tend to find is as you pop it this way you'll bend the pins which might just make it a little bit harder to pop it back in again. So that's got our Arduino in here now, we've got our uh, all our various bits and pieces. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is stick our bumper on and uh, attach our ultrasonic sensor and then we're going to wire everything up. So we'll just get a few of these little wires out of the way so that we can uh, work with this. Now, <clears throat> there's a few different ways people wire their ultrasonic sensors on. Uh, so what you'll find is you've got a bumper. Um, this is a clear plastic one. Uh, so this is, this is a hard one, which some people might have. Uh, so what you do is we're going to take our ultrasonic sensor. Now, these little speakers and um, microphone here, you want to have pointing in the direction the robot is going to go. So really what you want is for this to sit on the outside of the bumper. Now, some people uh, attach them like that, cable cross, uh, cable tie across in like a, a brace sort of thing, and then just kind of stick it on there like that. Um, other people kind of stick them on that way with a bit of uh, sticky tape once they've kind of attached them to the wires. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different ways that, uh, that you can do it and it all really sort of depends on your application. So um, feel free to experiment with that. I'll show you the way that we'll do it with a piece of core flute. So <clears throat> the beauty of core flute, and I've sort of put this together already, but you can see in here there's actually a whole bunch of little holes. There's a bunch of channels that exist in core flute. And it just so happens that they're pretty much exactly the width of the end of a jumper wire. Um, so the really nice thing with this is that you can uh, press the female end of the jumper wire through the channel in the core flute and it will just hold it in place really, really nicely and you can see that here uh, quite happily and that's, that's pretty stable. And so the nice thing with that is that all I need to do then is plug my ultrasonic sensor in to the four wires like that and it's nice and stable it's not going to go anywhere I can press that through a little bit to kind of really hold it in place and that's that's a nice mounting point so now my uh, <clears throat> my simple bot has got some some eyes essentially uh, so once we've got that in place we'll just pop this on the end here now these just press fit on so you shouldn't need to do too much just uh, get your ultrasonic wires out of the way and we just press that on there like that. Um, some people take these down, some people add, uh, you know, punch some holes in here and kind of add additional cable ties to kind of press it on. But really, that's, that's the aim of what we want to do. And it, it's pretty solid anyway. You're not, you're not going to be driving it uh, around mountains, so it's not a problem. So that's, uh, that's it up to the point of wiring this guy up. So we'll... Uh, We'll pause there and I'll show you how to wire it up in the next section. So the last thing we're going to do is wire this up. Now, I've taken the opportunity quickly to put my AA batteries in here into the, uh, into the battery pack so that we've got everything pretty much ready to go. Uh, so you'll see here I've tidied a few things up. I've, I've kind of pulled my, my cables through here, just down through the, the middle here, just so that it's uh, to make it nice and tidy, to keep all my wires sort of out of the way. And uh, the next thing I want to do is grab all of these jumper wires here and just open those guys up. So there's plenty more jumper wires here than what you're actually going to need to, uh, to use, but uh, hopefully that should give you some stuff to, to play with in the future. So we'll just clean up a little bit. So just spread our jumper wires out so that we've got a, uh, a little bit of easiness to, to make things work. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the Arduino itself is going to get power from, over USB from the computer. So we don't need to power the Arduino. Um, however, we do need to power the servos because there's not enough power coming across the USB um, connection to be able to drive both servos. It won't, it won't work. So our battery is here just to drive the servos. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the red lead, which is the positive end of our battery, and we're going to pop this into one side of those spare uh, holes in the breadboard. Now, uh, 
if you haven't seen how a breadboard works before, uh, each horizontal row of lines are all connected together. So it's like just uh, attaching uh, multiple wires together. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this just into the uh, into that corner hole here. Um, <clears throat> so now what that's going to do is it's going to give us battery power across uh, all of those holes that we can see there, the other four holes. Now, we're going to need to do the same thing with the ground wire, um, which is the kind of negative wire from our battery. Uh, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's now given us um, power, 6 volts uh, for our servos, and ground. Now, when we're working with electronic circuits, uh, that have multiple components attached to them or multiple power sources, we need to have what's called a common ground. So what we need to do is we need to attach the ground of our battery to the ground of our Arduino and then that will then go on and connect to the ground on our uh, computer as well. So the first thing we're going to do is attach into this row uh, along here. We're going to just pop in one of our jumper wires and we're going to attach this to the ground uh, pin on the Arduino itself here, which you can see here is just marked by GND. So we'll pop that in there like that. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got a common ground across all of the components that are going to be drawn together. We want to be able to connect up our servos. So each servo has three wires. Um, in, in this case, a brown one, a red one, and a yellow one. Um, all servos work the same way, so you've got the center pin or the centre wire is always your voltage. Um, the, uh, the brown one or black one uh, will be ground, so we need to attach that to our ground pin. And the, uh, the orange one in this case is our signal wire. So basically we want our power and ground to be attached to our battery and we want our signal wire to be attached to our Arduino. So all we're going to do is just grab a couple of uh, wires here. So in this case, I'm going to use yellow for my uh, my power lines. I'm going to use blue for my grounds, and then I'm going to use uh, maybe green for my signal lines. Um, doesn't really matter which colours you're using for which, but just so long as you're consistent, you'll know what's going on. So all we're going to do here is take our take our servo, and we're going to plug in our five volts plug in our ground uh, and these might take a little bit of pressure to kind of get them in there but uh, just be careful not to bend them and our signal. Okay so now we've got this we'll attach our ground to our ground, uh, our power to our power and we should hear the, uh, the little servo actually click into gear in a sec. So you might have heard that just there, we'll do that again. So that's just it, getting some power and moving to a stable point. And then our green wire, in this instance we've got our right wheel, so we want that to be attached to pin uh, 9. So we just count down our pins on this side. There's actually some writing which you probably won't be able to see on the video here. Um, but we're going to attach this to, uh, to pin, uh, pin 9. Uh, and there we go. So that's one side wired up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So we just grab our servo here. Um, We've got a signal line. Oops. So signal, ground, and power. When you're plugging things in as well um, and it connecting things to power sources, then the best thing to do as well is to uh, to make sure that you just attach your grounds first, uh, generally. So we kind of attach that in there like that, uh, get our power in, and then this one we're going to attach to uh, to pin 8 in this instance. So we've got our uh, two servos there, we can just tuck our wires in just to kind of get them out of the way now. Um, so there we go, so nice and tidy. So we've got power, ground and signal going through to our power and ground rails here and we've got our signal wires coming along to our Arduino on this side. So that leaves us really only with one piece left which is our um, ultrasonic sensor. So our ultrasonic sensor, um, it has four wires. Now we've got, uh, we can see them marked 
on the front here. So we've got the first one which is VCC or power, uh, we have trigger, we have echo and we have ground. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is connect our ground, so in this case that's our, uh, that's our purple wire, so we'll just attach that to our ground point. Um, so we attach that in there. Now, we can run this off the battery, um, but we should probably run it off our Arduino really just to kind of not cause any problems. So this is going to want to take 5 volts. So we'll just uh, find our little 5 volt uh, point on here, uh, which is, uh, it's actually on the other side. Um, so it's just that one there. Uh, now, the trigger and echo pins on the ultrasonic sensor uh, you can use them independently, they're actually designed to be used independently. However, for the purposes of this simple bot, um, we can actually use them off the same pin because the Arduino can switch between um, triggering and receiving uh, so as an input and an output quite happily. So we're going to connect both of these wires to digital pin uh, 6 in this case. So we just take our green and our yellow wire there and we both plug them into the same one. Um, we do have to plug these in, um, you can't just plug one in, you need to plug in both, uh, but they can both go into the same pin on our Arduino. Um, and that's it, that's our SimpleBot fully made. So you can see it's nice and stable, uh, no problems there at all, we've got everything up and running, and then all we now need to do is plug this into our uh, USB download our code which you can see in the, uh, the, the links at the end of this video and you can start working with that quite happily so long as you've got uh, Johnny5 and Fermata and everything installed uh, as per normal. So there's the simple bot and have fun and I'd love to see pictures and things like that that you have built with it. Thanks for watching.